A lot of the pillars of the economy that drive our prosperity, things like resource extraction, manufacturing, and transportation of goods, can come with risks to the environment. Most of this activity occurs without incident. But when things do go wrong, the environmental damage and economic costs can be significant, even catastrophic. And in some cases, society, rather than those responsible, can end up paying the bill. The costs can include things like taxpayer-funded cleanup, health impacts and loss of life, and the lost environmental benefits we enjoy from clean air, water, and soil. So, what are we doing about it? Well, a lot, actually. We use regulations to make sure things are done safely and sustainably, and we have laws and rules that hold people and companies liable for damage they cause. The problem is that our liability rules often come with gaps. When disasters happen, society can sometimes end up bearing the cost. This can happen for a number of reasons, but a common one is bankruptcy. When a company that's caused environmental damage goes under, taxpayers can end up stuck with the bill. You might ask, isn't that just a cost to society of doing business? Well, it shouldn't be. First, it's unfair for society to have to bear the cost of private actions. Second, it can actually make risks worse. When a company knows it might not have to bear the cost of environmental damage that it causes, it has less incentive to reduce risk. This can make disasters more likely. Of course, companies want to avoid disasters given the cost to their reputation and bottom line. But sometimes these incentives aren't enough. We can end up in a vicious cycle. The fact that society might bear the costs can lead to even riskier behavior from companies, which can lead to even bigger risks for society. We need a policy tool that can stop this cycle. Something that, one, ensures companies pay for any damage they cause, two, gives them an incentive to reduce risk, and three, does these things cost effectively. In short, we need something that can reduce risk to the environment and maintain our economic prosperity. The solution is a tool called financial assurance. Financial assurance requires companies to promise or commit funds against their environmental risks. The bigger the risk, the more they commit. Cash deposits, insurance coverage, industry funds, these are all examples of financial assurance. Financial assurance gives companies an incentive to find cost-effective ways to reduce risk and helps align businesses' interests with the public interest. We already use financial assurance in some parts of the economy, but in others, we don't use it enough, and we sometimes don't use it at all. When it comes to using financial assurance to reduce risk to the environment, we can do better. The mining sector provides a good illustration. Mining comes with environmental risks, but the mining sector is also an important part of our economy, providing jobs and income, not to mention the metals and minerals that go into everything from smartphones to solar panels. To explain financial assurance, let's consider two types of risk in the mining sector. First, there's a risk that a company won't clean up its mine when operations end, which can lead to lasting environmental impacts. Governments often require financial assurance from mining companies to address this type of risk. Doing so gives companies an incentive to limit their environmental impact. For example, a company that provides a cash deposit against the site's cleanup costs only gets it back when the cleanup work is done. This creates an incentive to clean up the site. It also gives the company an incentive to minimize its environmental impact and thereby the cost of cleanup. If a company failed to clean up the site, it would lose its deposit, which the government could then use to pay for the cleanup. This means taxpayers don't get stuck with a bill. So not only does financial assurance reduce risk, it also shields society from costs. Using financial assurance to address the risk of mines not getting cleaned up reduces risk to the environment. It does so cost-effectively by harnessing market forces and incentives. And it encourages mines to innovate and come up with new ways to reduce the environmental impact of mining. It allows us to enjoy the benefits of mining with less risk. But there's another kind of environmental risk in the mining sector, one that isn't yet covered by financial assurance. Possible disasters like the collapse of a tailing dam are not subject to financial assurance. If a tailing spill were to bankrupt the responsible company, society would bear the costs. The potential for mining firms to pass on their costs in this way reduces their incentive to limit the risk of a disaster and can make mining disasters more likely. Financial assurance is a powerful tool because it gives companies an economic incentive to reduce environmental risk. The greater the risk they pose, the more assurance they provide, and the greater the incentive they have. It also reduces risk by screening out excessively risky projects, since projects that can't afford the cost of their risk don't proceed. This makes it more likely that the benefits of new projects will outweigh the costs. In addition, financial assurance ensures that society doesn't get stuck with the bill for a company's environmental damage. It recognizes that cleaning up damage can be costly and that a clean environment has value. And by harnessing market forces, financial assurance can reduce risk and protect society at a minimal cost to the economy. 
Questions around the impact on competitiveness are valid, but there are multiple ways to address competitiveness, and sharing environmental risk is a potentially costly way of doing so. By using smart, flexible financial assurance, we can keep costs low and help sectors stay competitive. Ultimately, financial assurance reverses the cycle. It makes sure that gaps in the law don't lead to costs for society, and this, in turn, helps reduce risk. By making greater use of financial assurance, we can better manage risk to the environment. We can get the economic outcomes we want while reducing the risk of disaster. To learn more, go to ecofiscal.ca.